to 2012. Now in 2013, we welcome Virginia Republican Congressman Eric Cantor, House Majority Leader, with us in New York. And welcome back here to our studio in New York City. Oh, great to be here. Uh, what are we to make of what appears to be, um, I guess, shifting headlines for American consumers, no, at least some of them? I, you know, I think it's disappointing for so many Americans because when they were promised that their health care costs would go down, their access would increase, and oh, by the way, if you liked the health care you had, you could keep it. These were all the promises made. Uh, what we're beginning to see is those promises are not being kept. And unfortunately, this is going to have real impact to so many people, millions of people. Uh, as you rightly point out, the predictions are now that uh, health care claims costs are going to rise significantly under Obamacare when it's fully implemented next year and that is the biggest driver of premium costs and you may see folks with double digit increases in their premium I've seen some estimates which uh, say that individuals and then folks in small group plans could actually see premium costs double now while you're having a tough economy if you're in a family that's having difficulty making it through the month that's not a good thing to, to look forward so to. just to put a fine point on this one when the claims go higher that cost is um, reflect Insurance companies, that's passed on to the consumer. That's what you're arguing. That's exactly right. That's the main driver of the cost uh, of health care. When the, when the insurance company has to pay more out, where do they get the money from? They turn to either the employer, or in this case, the individuals, and they'll raise the price of the premiums. And that's the concern. And the president had based his claim on the fact that we're going to lower health care costs uh, in this instance. And unfortunately, it's not going to be the case. A year from now, we believe it will be fully implemented. Right? Based on everything we read at the moment, you know, and in shifting deadlines in a lot of cases. Still, though, it's the law. Right. And if it's the law, what then? Well, I mean, this is what we're going to have to deal with. And in fact, I've met with administration officials last week to try and get a sense of what the people of this country can expect. Uh, the federal government is going to have to be up online in the fall with a website so that individuals can access the exchanges that the government is setting up. As you know, Bill, there are many states, including one like mine in Virginia, that is not going to have a state-run exchange. This provides another hurdle for the administration to get over. How are they going to establish this? and let folks know what to do. Uh, there's going to be a lot of confusion about the implementation of Obamacare. And unfortunately, what we're seeing now, the reality will be a lot of increase in costs due to the president's health care bill, uh, health care law, and something I hope we in Congress can try and address. I mean, we're going to have to go and try and um, affect some of the negative parts of this bill, which we've been claiming all along uh, was a bill that wasn't going to uh, accomplish the end of bringing down health care costs. Uh, for, Republicans for have argued from the beginning that that would be the case, and we'll see how that plays out. Three other big topics right now. You know what's happening at the U.S. Supreme Court on gay marriage is being argued this week. Should marriage be redefined in America today? Well, you know, Bill, out of a personal religious conviction, I've always believed that in traditional marriage between a man and a woman. Uh, and uh, that doesn't mean that we can't have respect for others uh, who have differing beliefs. And I have no idea where the court is going to come down on this. And I know that uh, many across the country are, are waiting that decision. But you're not changing your position is what you're saying now. Uh, again, it's always been a, a matter of a personal religious conviction for me. Understood. But many politicians apparently are coming out and they're going public just in the last 14 days. Uh, many of whom are are in the U.S. Senate, some members of the House, but you are not moving, correct? And I think we in this country, um, you know, have to be respectful of others. And I think a lot of the acrimony in Washington around this issue and others has to do with the unwillingness to respect others with differing opinions. But in the end, it's what makes America what it is. We all have the ability to express our beliefs, to adhere to those beliefs, and do so with um, a, a certain dose of tolerance uh, of others. Now, immigration. President Obama just said yesterday he thinks a bill could be cobbled together in about a month. He thinks he might be able to sign a bill in, uh, into law by the end of the summer. Does that fit your timeline? 
Well, I mean, there's a lot of activity going on in the House or the Senate. Uh, the president spoke about border security yesterday. Um, and there, there is, I think, a lot of interest in trying to see if we can live up to really two traditions in this country. And one has to do with our being a country of immigrants. I mean, my grandparents came here from Eastern Europe at the turn of the last century. If they weren't allowed to do that and hadn't made that decision, I wouldn't be sitting here with you. Uh, so many others in this country can tell that story. And we've got that tradition that has made America what it is, is a strong, vibrant place to live and grow and raise a family. And we have the other, which is um, upholding the law. Uh, and uh, as the president said yesterday and others, we've got to make sure that border security is, uh, is being implemented, uh, that the law start at our borders. Uh, and in weighing these two things, uh, I think that we can come to some agreement. So now, you think immigration reform well, is possible? I, in, in some way, I believe that we can work together and to do something on this matter. Now, there's the comprehensive approach that, other, that folks are trying to work on right now. That is a tall order in anything that we do. And we saw health care, Middle East peace, comprehensive things are tough to come by. Indeed they are. And, and uh, so, but I will say Say, we've got an opportunity, I think, to come together on one point, and that is the kids. If, if a kid was brought here by his parents or her parents, unbeknownst to them, and know no other place than home, uh, than America's home, why wouldn't we want to give them a path to citizenship? I, have 20, I think we should. I have 20 seconds left here. We have just confirmed that leading Republican senators will have dinner with the president on the 10th of April. Um, what do you make of the outreach from the president? Well, the know, I, I think it's welcomed. I think a lot of us feel like we don't know this president or this White House because there hasn't been a lot of this kind of activity. Welcome the opportunity to sit down and discuss and see if we can arrive at some solutions for these very vexing problems who, that have been hanging around for a while that the people of this country want us to uh, go ahead and solve so they can go on, on about their lives and see their lives work for them and their kids. Uh, four topics. Thanks for moving through them quickly. Well, watch that immigration story you mention on children in America today. Eric Cantor, welcome back to New York. Thanks, Thank you, Bill. sir. All right. Allison? Thanks, Bill.